Hi everyone, Stepan here. Fabiano Caruana won another major event after the candidates tournament a few weeks ago and he just uh, finished the Grenke Chess Classic in first place, which is an absolutely astonishing achievement considering the how strong the fields were in both events and in this in this tournament in the Grenke, Levon Aronian was playing, Magnus was playing, MVL was playing, amazingly strong players and Caruana once again came on top uh, and outplayed the competition uh, in great style. In this game, uh, in this last game from round 9, he was playing black against Nikita Vityugov and he had five and a half uh, before round 9 with half a point more than uh, second place uh, players. So he had to win in order to se secure first place, but the draw could have secured it as well. He would have had to rely on uh, the results of other games. But uh, Caruana is playing uh, like a magician and the beast and like Mikhail Tal and Bo Mikhail Tal and Bobby Fischer combined uh, in the in the last month. So I had no doubt that he would play an attacking game and of course not go for a draw. So after e4 uh, by Vitigov, he went for his Petrov, his favorite Russian game. Uh, e5, knight f3, knight f6. And now this is his very well known te territory. He's been playing it uh, in the candidates and in the Grenke as well. And uh, after d4 by Nikita Vityugov, they enter the modern attack. He doesn't, Vityugov doesn't go for knight takes e5, which is the most common line, but still there are a lot of games played from this position. Knight takes e4, d takes e5, d5, knight b to d2, this is on the main line theory, and now there are about 100 games with knight takes d2 and a couple hundred games with knight to c5. But uh, Caruana played a complete novel novelty in this position, a move that has never, never been played before. He played queen to d7, which uh, is supposed to be slightly better for white, because white, of course, has an option of taking the knight, and after uh, pawn takes e4, then white has to remove the knight, but he will lose castling rights, and it's a, it depends who is better. I mean, both sides stand well, there's compensation for both sides, but Vitikov doesn't go for that, he plays bishop to d3, which is a weak move now. It's completely natural, but it gives uh, black justification for his for his waste of tempo with queen to d7 and uh, developing move instead of, instead of reacting with the knight. And now after bishop to d3 was provoked, he does play knight to c5. And now bishop to e2 by Vitugo, wasting the whole tempo with the bishop and black is now virtually tempo up in the modern attack of the, of the Petrov. And this is probably Caruana's preparation and he was expecting a move such as bishop to d3 and then a retreat bishop e2. So he already definitely won the open, opening battle and he's already equal, perhaps even slightly better. Uh, he continues with g6, preparing to fianchetto his kingside bishop, knight to b3, challenging the knight, knight to e6, he could have exchanged as well, and knight takes b3 is uh, a bit better for white, but but still okay for black, knight to e6 is the strongest move, which he must have known. So knight e6, uh, bishop to e3, c5, advancing in the center, and you can already see that black is visually, practically and positionally better in this position. Uh, Engine-wise, it's completely equal, but it's much easier to play with black. He has more space on the queen side and in the center. White's e5 pawn is, I think, more a weakness than a strength, even though it uh, covers f6 and d6, and it will be uh, it will be a problem to defend it throughout the game, especially since the bishop is going to develop to, to g7 very soon, and the knight is going to come to c6. So bl black has a much more comfortable position. Uh, now knight to g5 is played, exchanging the knights, b6, uh, ignoring that, knight takes e6, and now f takes e6. If he took with the queen, that would have given uh, a weakness a weakness to, to, to black as well, and it would be much easier to play with white, and he could actually uh, get a passed pawn with an immediate f4, so I think taking with the, with the pawn is much, much better for, for black, so f takes e6, a4 now, of aggressive play by Nikita Vitigo, and he has to play aggressively because Garwana is going to crush him otherwise, as he did MVL and every other player he played in the last month and you definitely need to be aggressive against him against him if you want a chance to to draw or to win and even even with white pieces so a4 bishop to b7 uh, nikita castles knight to c6 and black's position is perfect all of his pieces stand well the bishop is great uh, on on b7 the other bishop will be great on on g7 the knight has a perfect square on c6 the queen is active the king can castle both sides and it will be okay and i just think black outplayed white completely in the opening and 
you can see that the Petrov is Caruana's main weapon against e4, and you can see why. Uh, f4 now by Nikita, which, ha, ah, okay, it's it's a double-edged move. It does secure e5, but it weakens the king side, and you could argue whether it's good or, or bad. Uh, bishop to h6, now not going to g7, h6 is more active now that e5 is secured. And now a5, another pretty weakening move, and the double-edged move opening up the queen side, but... It will it will damage White's uh, queenside pawn structure as well and White's chances on the queenside, and it will definitely if if uh, White takes on on b6 and a takes and exchanges the rooks, Black can of course take with the bishop and well, White didn't achieve much and the b6 pawn is still strong, so a5 is a dubious move and now in this position even the engines would tell you that that Black is slightly better but practically. Uh, he's better for he's been better for ten moves now. So knight to e7, retreating and looking at the weak f5 square. And if White wants to prevent that weakening himself with a move such as g4, would I think it would weaken the king too much, especially with this strong bishop on the diagonal. And with the knight coming to f5, this is now almost impossible to hold for White uh, already at this point. Now he plays bishop to g4, challenging uh, the e6 pawn d4 advancing in the center and opening up the the strong bishop on the diagonal and you can already see that that white is just uncomfortable here and all of his pieces stand badly the knight on on, on b, b3 is completely misplaced it should be on c3 the bishop has no squares it will have to retreat to c1 this bishop on g4 is okay it's attacking e6 but it isn't really easy to to take uh, the e6 pawn and the bishop can always defend from d5 so of, co of course, now we're retreating to c1, uh, castles uh, kingside by Caruana, which I think it is safer than castling queenside because the, the a foul could be open with a takes b6. Queen to d3, uh, bishop to d5, the perfect outpost for the bishop as well, and the knight is coming to f5, the bishop is on d5. If white ever pushes c4, then just d takes, uh, sorry, then just d takes c and pass on. So, very very hard to play for white. Uh, queen to h3, attacking e6 twice, uh, bishop to g7, knight to d2, rerouting the knight perhaps to the e4 square if the bishop ever moves, knight to f5, and now taking the knight, I, I mean, it would be a lesser evil move, I guess. Uh, if you took the knight, then g takes, opens up the g file and solidifies black structure and weakens the white king even further, and if you don't take the knight, the knight on f5 is a beast, and as Ben Feingold would, would say, knife f5. Uh, c4, of course, Sampasan, d takes c. b takes c, uh, now he has two isolated pawns as well, as, as well as worse pieces. Rook a to d8, a takes b6, a takes rook to e1, uh, b5, advancing on the queen side, knight to e4. Uh, it's a centralizing move, but it's a weak move, and you're never really threatening to go to, to d6 or to f6, because it's defended too many times, so not much point to this. And now... Now black is almost completely winning uh, here, even though the material is equal. So now uh, queen to e7, he has to defend the c5 pawn, knight to g5, uh, okay, he got his knight to, to the black king, but it doesn't really do anything, it's attacking e6, which is now defended twice, h, uh, h6, just expelling the knight out of, out of the g5 square, knight to f3, and now bishop to c6, uh, solidifying the b5 pawn, uh, bishop takes f5, he has to take the knight, it was it was too strong. And now of course g takes f5. If he takes with the with the e pawn, then white would have a strong e5 passed pawn and white would perhaps even be better. And after g takes, this is now more than minus one for black and all of white's pieces once again white has a very strong bishop pair, even though the, the bishop on g7 is a bit blocked out and at the moment it will become very active very soon. Uh, the bishop on c6 is the best piece on the board. It's arguably better than all any any rook on the board. White's rooks, rooks or, or black's rooks. And it's controlling too many key squares in white's position. The queen is too active. It's looking at h4. It's looking at uh, the whole key, queen side. And it's very active. And the rook has the, the only open file, the d file. So... The position is much better to, to play for black. And in this position, uh, he Nikita Vityuga went a bit wrong. He played bishop to e3. It's uh, it's it's uh, opening up the piece and it's seemingly a good move because it's putting the bishop to the best possible square. But 
it's weakening and it gives black too much time and he now just plays rook to d3 Carvana plays rook to d3 infiltrating with the rook and this is just busted now if c4 happens the rook is permanently defended and white just has nothing in the position what he should have played is perhaps knight to h4 and after knight to h4 let's say rook to a8 uh, because now knight to g3 is not a threat because the rook is hanging on, on, on a1 so rook takes a8 rook takes a8 knight to g6 and just queen to f7 but at least white would dislodge the rook from the d file and he would have had a bit more chance but after bishop to e3 and rook to d3 uh, he plays rook a to c1 the bishop is defended for now rook to a8 now black has both the d file and the a file just complete control over the board and if you look at the key diagonals and the key files, black is controlling every single one. Uh, queen to h4, challenging the queen, trying to get out of the mess and trying to relieve some pressure from the position. And Caruana obliges because his position is too dominant anyway. Queen takes h4, knight takes h4, c4, solidifying the rook and getting his passed pawns, uh, perhaps getting his passed pawn, because any, any b4 push would now create a passed pawn inevitably. Uh, king to f2. Uh, bishop to f8 the bishop was as i said stuck on g7 looking at the e5 pawn and now it can reroute to h3 to a3 uh, knight to f3 bishop to d5 uh, completely blocking out any counterplay for white at the moment knight to d4 and now bishop to c5 challenging the knight and here nikita vitigo plays a desperate move reasoning that he's lost anyway so he might as well try it's actually a nice try and he gets a couple of pawns for the piece or for the exchange but the move is completely completely losing at this position it's lost but it's not dead lost and after nikita vitigo plays knight takes f5 uh, sacrificing a knight for the exchange uh, or sacrificing the exchange i'm sorry then it's just completely busted and of course caruana now uh, has to move the bishop because the bishop is attacked that was the point of the sacrifice threatening h6 with check and attacking the bishop so now bishop to a3 gaining a tempo on the rook knight takes h6 check king to g7 f5 defending the knight uh, by the bishop so a very nice tactic by by Vitigo, but unfortunately it doesn't work because bishop takes rook uh, on c1 bishop takes c1 and now rook takes c3 and that's it busted there's nothing you can do he has he has a pawn for the exchange but that's clearly not enough because black also has two uh two passed pawns on the b and the c file and i i'm sure that white couldn't stop them if he had another rook on the board so he just played f6 uh, in this position after king to g6 he resigned and uh, okay he could have fought on for a few more moves but a defeat is inevitable especially against the player at caruana strength and especially against caruana who's been playing like like a god for the for the last month and there's nothing he could have done here so he resigned and with this win caruana got to six and a half out of nine clear first place winning another tournament winning a uh, second major event in a row after the candidates tournament and i don't think magnus is scared but i think he's much more scared than he was when he had to face sergey karyakin and their match that will be held in london in november will I think it will be a blast to watch and it will be much more exciting than the than the Karyakin Carlson game. Okay everybody, thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for more chess. Thanks. Bye.